Hey, Dad, don't come to my wedding. It was an unexpected news that came into my ordinary life. The news that my daughter was getting married. I had gone through a lot, but I had raised my daughter with love. However, she rejected my participation in her wedding face to face. To make matters worse, I found out an unbelievable truth. I won't show any mercy anymore. I'll corner her decisively now. My name is Irving. I work for a famous company while working for my family every day. It's not stimulating, but I'm living a relatively peaceful life. One day, I received some happy news in my uneventful daily life. It was the news that my daughter Maria was getting married. However, the relationship between Maria and me is a bit complicated. The reason is that Maria is not my real daughter. She is the stepdaughter of my wife, Ashlyn. At that time, Maria was only seven years old. Despite being young, she was a considerate child. On the day Irving started living together with Maria, she smiled and said, Nice to meet you, Dad. Ah, nice to meet you too. But you do have to call me dad if you don't want to. But mom said. If Maria really wants to call me dad, then you can do it anytime. Until then, you can call me uncle or big brother. Yeah, uncle is fine. Okay, uncle. Nice to meet you. <laughs> uncle, it is. It was about six months later when Maria started calling me dad. I was so happy the tears welled up in my eyes. My wife, Ashlyn, and I had a good relationship as a couple. We were surrounded by our lovely daughter and had happy days. However, such happiness did not last long. It happened when Maria was in junior high school. One morning on a holiday, I went to the living room and found Maria watching TV alone. I sat on the sofa at a distance from her and tried to talk to her, hoping to enjoy some family time together. Maria, this program seems to be popular lately. Is it training at school? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Oh, I heard there's a new restaurant nearby. Why don't we go out for lunch together? We don't usually go out for lunch. What? Irving's daughter stood up abruptly and left the living room with an unfriendly attitude. He felt pathetic but shocked at her unprecedented coldness. Did I do something to Maria? Or was he just in a bad mood? He reassured himself that it was just a coincidence. However, his daughter's attitude didn't change the next day or the day after that. Filled with anxiety, he decided to talk to his wife about it. Ashlyn, do you think Maria hates me? What's wrong? Why are you asking all of a sudden? Did something happen? Well, it seems like she's been distant since she started middle school. Really? She seems fine to me. Is it just me then? Did I do something to offend her? After thinking for a moment, his wife said, You know, it's probably just her rebellious face. Rebellious face? She's probably going through puberty and her rebellious face at the same time. She'll calm down eventually. I see. Is that what it is? Especially for girls, it's just the way it is. Don't worry too much about it. I guess so. Having been comforted by his wife, Irving tried to take it easy. Thinking that Maria would eventually go back to her old self. However, a year later, his wife began treating him coldly as well. 
You smell bad lately. Have you been taking a bath properly? What? I take a bath every day. I even clean the bathtub myself before getting out. Well, I wouldn't want to bathe in the same tub as someone greasy like you. My wife turns to our daughter in the same room and says, Hey, Maria. Our daughter agrees reluctantly, making a face. I really wish you wouldn't come near me with that smell. And make sure you don't wash your underwear together with your father's. I know that. I don't want to either. Seriously, how much longer do we have to share the same space with him? Just breathing the same air for three seconds makes me nauseous. Yeah, it's disgusting. Why don't we go out just the two of us? Really? Yay, I love you, Mom. That's settled then. You stay home and finish cleaning and doing the laundry. With that, my wife and daughter leave the room, leaving me behind. Since then, whenever they go out, it's always without me. They probably badmouth me to each other. Sometimes my wife goes out alone, all dressed up. And I have no idea where she goes or what she does. This has been going on for years now. Time had passed, and it was around the time Maria turned 25. One day, out of nowhere, she said to me, Dad, I'm getting married. Marriage? I didn't even know you had a boyfriend. So my daughter has already reached that age, huh? Reflecting on my history with Maria, I was lost in thought for a while. Congratulations on your marriage, Maria. What kind of person is your partner? Huh? It's none of your business, is it? I conceded to my cold daughter and continued the conversation. But still, you have to meet him face to face, right? He told his dad he's too busy with work to meet you. What? As a father, I have to properly greet your partner. Oh, but just so you know, don't come to the wedding, okay? What? I couldn't believe what I was hearing from my daughter. What did you just say? Don't come to the wedding? I'm your father, aren't I? Suppressing my agitation, I managed to say something. W- why not? It's weird that a father can't attend his daughter's wedding. Huh? Father? <laughs> don't make me laugh. I don't want to introduce you as my father, a dirty old man like you. D- dirty old man? We've been living together as a family until now, haven't we? Gross, you're not even my real father, and yet you act like you're part of the family. As Irving stumbled forward in response to his daughter's sharp criticism, his wife began to chime in as well. That's right, you're just an ATM to Maria and me, she said. What? An ATM? Irving asked. Oh, don't act surprised. The reason I married you in the first place was because you had a high paying job at a good company. His wife replied. That's ridiculous. We've been married for 20 years as partners. Irving protested. Can you stop now? It's disgusting. Maria's husband works at a better company than you do. If Maria marries well and gets rich, I won't have any obligation to stay with you anymore. His wife continued. What is that supposed to mean? You really think that way about me? Irving asked. If someone like you came to Maria's wedding, it would ruin the whole thing. If you care even a little bit about Maria, don't come to the wedding. 
Got it? His wife retorted. The sudden reality hit Irving hard, leaving him speechless. He retreated to his room, desperate to escape this situation as soon as possible. From then on, his wife and daughter treated him with even more indifference, as if he were a filthy object to be avoided. Irving found it increasingly difficult to face them and began spending as little time as possible at home. One day, while he was locked away in his room as usual, he overheard his wife and daughter talking. Mom, he's still holed up in his room today. He's really creepy, his daughter said. Well, as long as he's out of sight, it's fine. He's probably just sleeping soundly, his wife replied. I'm relieved I don't have to see that ugly face anymore. But still, I wonder if he really won't come to the wedding. Don't worry, he said it firmly enough. You don't have to worry, your fiancé reassures you. Well, that's good. By the way, Is your father doing all right? Will he come? I overhear my daughter's words in the phrase. Wait, did she just say how further? What does that mean? I'm her father. Then my wife says something unbelievable. Don't worry, he's cleared his schedule, but it's great that your real father will be able to come to the wedding. Yeah, it's been so long since I've seen him. I don't remember much, but I'm sure he'll be so happy for me, my daughter says. Of course, he's your real father after all. It's only natural he's happy that his own daughter is getting married, my wife asks. Well, even that guy who's not even related to my blood was so happy about it. He was clueless and acting like a fool. My daughter chuckles. If it's that father, we can expect a nice gift too, my wife says. He started his own company and is doing so well. It's amazing, my daughter remarks. He was even featured on the news, my wife adds. I was surprised when I saw him the other day. He looked so slim and handsome, like an actor. He's nothing like that bold, smelly, pot-bellied guy, my daughter says. Well, I wonder why Irving and him turned out to be so different. Let's keep meeting up with our real father from now on, the three of us. At that moment, I felt something crumbling with a loud noise. I see. So that's what it was. They were keeping me at bay to invite my biological father to the wedding. And they had been frequently meeting up with him without my knowledge. Well, if that's what you want, I've got some plans of my own too. And with that, I made up my mind to seek revenge for being treated like an ATM all this time. I commissioned a through investigation, and once the results were in, I told the two of them, I'm not going to the wedding, and I'm leaving this house. My daughter exclaimed, Really? Yes! And jumped up and down with joy. The wedding is in about two weeks, right? I leave on that day. But you were just a creepy old man, but you were surprisingly clever. Lucky me! My wife and daughter giggled and seemed to be eagerly anticipating my departure. Ignoring them, I immediately started packing and preparing to leave. On the day of his wedding, just as Irving was about to load his belongings into the car and leave, His wife and daughter approached him with smirks on their faces. 
finally leaving Ayu. Today is Mary's wedding, after all. It's really a joyous occasion, his wife said. Absolutely! What a wonderful day! His daughter chimed in. You're finally getting out of here. That's what you wanted, right? His wife added. What do you mean? I was just trying to have one last conversation with you. Irving replied. Oh, and make sure to file the divorce papers properly, his wife said. Gross, you're disgusting. Hurry up and get out of here, you silly old man. We are busy too, you know, his daughter said. All right then, see ya, Irving said, ignoring the two of them who wore smug expressions. He got in the car and knew that he would never return to his house again. A few hours later, Irving arrived safely at his newly rented apartment and took a breather. There was when he received a call from someone telling him to come to the wedding venue immediately. Well, he had expected this to happen. Honestly, he never wanted to see his wife and daughter again, but this was the moment he had been waiting for the perfect opportunity for revenge. All right, let's go. Irving got back into his car and drove to the wedding venue. As soon as he arrived, he found that there was an argument taking place. Why did you break off the engagement? This is ridiculous. I can't accept this. Explain to me, sis. His daughter shouted so loudly that her voice echoed throughout the corridor. As I slowly opened the door, there stood my daughter and wife in wedding dresses, my daughter's fiancé, his parents, and his grandparents. And there was one unfamiliar man. He must be her real father. As I entered the room, both my wife and daughter opened their eyes wide at the same time. What the hell, old man? What are you doing here? My daughter yelled at me. Why? Because I was cold, I replied. Cold? That's impossible, she said. It's true. I was called by your fiancé's grandpa. I explained. Huh? Yes, the one who had called me a while ago was my daughter's fiancé's grandpa. He was a person who had helped me a lot when I was just starting my career. Dad, I used to meet Eric a few times a year, but I never imagined that Eric's grandchild would be your fiancé. I don't get it. It's just a coincidence, right? My daughter said. Then Eric, who had been listening quietly, began to explain to my daughter in my place. Well, I was surprised too at first. When I heard that Irving's daughter was getting married, it happened to be at the same time as my grandchild. So I asked some questions and it turned out that they were marrying each other. There must be some kind of connection between Irving and me. Eric said, Lies! My daughter said, looking pale. Ignoring my daughter's reaction, Eric continued speaking. And I heard beforehand that Irving wouldn't be attending the wedding ceremony. You apparently told him not to come. So I had already informed my grandson about this. He's the one who will make the final decision. But I wanted him to reconsider carefully whether or not his partner is someone suitable for marriage. I, I see. At that moment, the daughter's fiancé took over the conversation. Yes, I had heard about it beforehand from my grandfather, but because I wanted to believe in you, I was planning to marry you if your foster father attended the ceremony. 
However, the man who came here was someone even my grandfather didn't know. Glancing at the other father, the fiance continued I can't marry a woman who disrespects her foster parents. I declare here and now that the engagement is over. En- engagement over? At the groom's words, the daughter's face turned pale. Please don't say that the engagement is over. I've already made up my mind. I never thought you were someone who didn't value their family. No, this person isn't my family. You were raised by them for 20 years and they're not your family? What are you talking about? It's thanks to Irving Sen that you've been able to live this far. That's terrible, just terrible! As the engagement was called off, the daughter began to cry uncontrollably. Then, my wife began to make desperate excuses. Wait a minute, the man who came today is Mary's biological father. Don't you think that the real father should come to the wedding? Silence hung in the air, and reluctantly I responded. I married you and became Maria's father. We may not be biologically related, but I've raised her as my real daughter until now. So what? It's her wedding day. It would be better if her real father were here, don't you think? Yeah, I think so too. But that's only if he's really her biological father. I pointed to the man called Maria's biological father, and he flinched, averting his gaze from me. He, he's her real father. He's biologically related to her. I chuckled and grinned at my wife, who was explaining things in a hurry. Well, that's odd. Huh? I had a private investigator check it out. And he's just your lover, isn't he? Well, you see? Did my wife not know this fact, or was my daughter, who had been crying until then, now asking her mother, What's going on? Maria, no, that's not it. Don't misunderstand. This man is really your father. Mom? You introduced me to him as my real dad, didn't you? Maria! I was separated from my biological father when I was young, but I still remember his face faintly. He looked just like my dad, so I believed it when I was told I finally got to meet my real father. But it turned out to be a complete stranger. Who was also my mother's affair partner. So, you're saying he's not just a fling? Do you have any proof? My mother asked. Well, how do you explain this? I said as I took an envelope out of my bag and scattered its contents on the table. The pictures were evidence of my wife jetting on me. How did you get these? She stammered. What a despicable man. No, wait, please forgive me. She begged. What? I can never forgive you. You've been insulting and treating me like a nuisance. I raised my daughter thinking we were a real family, and yet you betrayed us like this. There's no way I can forgive you, I said angrily. I, I'm sorry, please stop, she pleaded. Shut up, I never forgive you and that man. I'm going to make sure you pay me compensation too, thinking you could just be happy by yourselves. How naive, regret your actions for the rest of your life. With that said, I left the wedding venue. Afterwards, 
my daughter's engagement was officially broken off. Various rumors spread from our mutual friends, and even our good friends have apparently distanced themselves from us. Rumors even spread at my daughter's workplace, and she was left with no place to go. Eventually, resigning by her own decision. Of course, I also divorced my wife Ashlyn, with evidence of her numerous infidelities. There was no way for her to refuse. I claimed compensation for the affair with the other man, and he apparently disappeared after transferring the compensation to me. The plan of the woman, who was supposed to remarry and be supported, ended up failing, and she is now working long hours every day. Naturally, my ex-wife. Who had deceived my daughter was also entranced by her. In this way, my family had completely fallen apart. In the end, those who didn't value their family had a fitting ending waiting for them. It was just punishment for their own actions. As for me, surprisingly, I have been enjoying the single life. With the salary that was previously spent on my wife and daughter, I recently started raising a dog. All right, Brutus, let's go on a long walk today. Woof. Together with my new family member, the beloved dog Brutus, I have begun a happy new start. From now on, I plan to enjoy my own time.